So now we're ready to add some user tracks to our existing automated trackers on the zoom shot. And we're also going to solve the camera and take it forward. So let's see what to do. So in a similar manner as we did with the nodal pen shot, in here we're going to use a user track after the auto track. So I'm going back to my create, take the user track from the tracking tab and connect it to the auto track. I'm going to click on create and I'm going to put my tracker right over here. And in here I'm going to track this forward and making sure that this tracker stays in place and continues to track that specific feature that I'm asking it to. Now we can click on the fetch button in order to bring in all the trackers from the auto track and see where else I might need to put some more trackers. So I'm going to the end of the footage and I'm going to click on create and I'm going to put a tracker right over here on this corner of the post. So I am at the end of the footage and I'm going to track back. Now at one point of course it's going to lose its feature physically because that feature disappears. So I'm going to take this back a couple of frames. I'm going to click on R minus. PF track is asking me, are you sure you would like to delete those frames going backwards? I'm going to say yes. Now we can go back to the create, to the solving, take the camera solver, and I can click on solve all. So as you can see here, all the trackers are green and I can take a look at the error tab and, and see that the errors are very low. If I click on the fit view, I can take the trim line and put it around one and refine the solution. And I also have some barrel distortion, as you can see at the edges of the frame. The distortion itself sits on negative 0.1, which is rather high, but the solution itself of the camera is accurate. If I click on the two horizontal view, you'll notice that I have a nodal pen shot. But if I take a look at the camera itself, you'll notice that it's Fustrum is animated. After the camera solver, we can now go to the create. And as you might have guessed it under the utilities, we can take the orient scene, click and drag and put it right after the camera solver. And in here, the workflow is going to be regular and it's not going to differ from the orient scene that we had for the nodal pen shot. And that means that under the orient scene, we're going to take our edit mode for the axes and we're going to determine where exactly we have our X axes and the Y axes. For the Y axes, if we I turn off X and Z, the Y axis should be from here to here and from here to here and the X axis can be from here to here and from here to there. Because we don't have a tracker that defines the ground plane, we can now take the marquee tool and just choose a tracker that will sit on the origin point of the scene. So let's take the edit mode and turn it to none. And we can choose any tracker that we want and click on set origin. Then the next step would be to export. So as we've seen in page one for the export for the nodal pen shot, in here I will also have to export not only the camera but also the undistorted footage. So going to the create, export, there's my export node being connected straight into the orient scene. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on clip export, making sure this is activated. And because we already have the nodal pen shot footage in this folder, I'm going to double click on the path and I'm going to click on the browse button. And in here under the exports, I'm going to create a new subfolder, call it zoom, capital U, undistort, choose. And then I'm going to make sure that the padding is on four, which means I'm going to have four numbers in the file names. And I'm going to click on export clips. This shouldn't take long because we only have 116 frames and going back to the export itself, I'm making sure that my format is on Autodesk Maya 2011 ASCII and I'm going to click on export scene. Export succeeded and now we can move into Maya and see how to set fit the nodal pen shot as well as the zoom shot we just finished. At this point, our zoom shot is almost done. 
and then we can take it into Maya. So let's jump to the next video and see the rest of the process.